Sometimes when you start planting up a border, it can be one plant that is in there that you've got to keep and then you've got to start building around. And in this case, I started with the beautiful hydrangea Annabelle. Hello, I'm Rosie Hardy. This is Rosie Hardy Gardening. So when you've got something which is quite large like Hydrangea Annabelle, and it is a really beautiful plant, huge, big heads here of this lovely creamy white. They start off green in bud and then open up and they become bigger than the size of a football, those flower heads, and they can become a little bit heavy. So you do need to remember to put some staking in around them, especially just as they're starting to grow because the support is needed lower down as well as higher up. And in the case of things like Annabelle, utilizing weaving willow or weaving hazel sticks or even birch around the base will get hidden when all of the rest of the growth goes up. So I have based this on the Annabelle on a semi-shady, moderately moist soil. So all the planting that I've put in to go with it and to complement it all loves that type of position. And it's not really color coordinated, it's more of some lovely colors which just are shown off by that beautiful limey lightness of Annabelle. So if we start at the far end, we've got the grasses. So I've put two grasses in. I've put two of these beautiful Melinia. And this is Melinia Heidebraut. Now that is known as the uh, moor grass. So it likes a bit of moisture, but it's very much an upright vertical. So you don't necessarily have to have three because you're not putting them in a group. Yes, you could repeat this down a border, absolutely. And then you could have more, but I just quite like the verticals of these because they're light and airy. The grass itself, the actual leaf is lower down and then the flower heads go up and they're just really good. So I've got one on this end and one on the other end there. And they just give you a sort of picture framework for the rest of what else is going on in the front. The Annabelle is sitting not in the middle, juxtaposition just to the side there, which means that you can then fall around from each side from that. Sometimes if you start with something right in the middle, it's really difficult because you feel like you've got to make it mirror image. Whereas if you have it just slightly to the far side, you've got more room to play with and increase what you're doing at this end edge of the border. So we have got a beautiful blue napita at the far end. This napita here. And that napita is napita subsessless blue dreams. It is a lowish growing one. It is, comes from woodlands in Japan, damp woodlands, so semi-shade. So unlike a lot of the other cat mints, it does not really want to be in full sun, although you can put it out a bit more full sun. So it is a beautiful underplanting and is flowering at this time of the year. So at exactly the same time of the year as the Annabelle. So we're talking about midsummer. We're here in UK in middle of July. So this is when it's naturally out. Large individual blooms and big heads on the Napita subsessilis. It's not liked by the cats as much as other ones, so you're not going to get it rolled around and eaten by the neighbouring cats. So that's always a helpful bit. Um, but it is really lovely. It grows to around about 45 centimetres, so just over 18 inches probably, and it will cover underneath where the Annabelle is, and it will go in exactly the same sort of position. So we start with the grass, we have the Annabelle, we have some lovely blue, so they're really lovely combinations because you've got a purpley tone on the grass, so that's picked out in the Napita itself. And then move on from that to a Hemerocallus. I love Hemerocallus, they are wonderful. But unfortunately, the flowers don't last for long. They're called the daylily. And they're called the daylily because each of these blooms opens up, lasts a day, and then it dies off. 
but every single head has probably 10 or 12 flower buds there. So therefore, it's going to last for a long time. And when you've got larger clumps, you've got more there and it's really good. This one is Joan Senior. It's a lovely, soft lemon cream and its flowers are held just above its foliage. So you always see the flowers. The foliage is a beautiful strap shape. So we have gone from broad leaves, well, strap shaped of the grass, through to broad leaves of the napita, broad leaves on the hydrangea, and then another lot of strap leaves. Now this changing in leaf shape and flower shape really does help you when you are trying to make differences in the border because when these plants are not in flower, they have to do something else as well. They've got to earn their space. So if they've got a different type of leaf or they've got a different color of leaf, that really helps a lot with giving you contrasts as you're going through your border and as you're going through the season. If you enjoy watching me discuss border combinations, then consider heading over to my website and signing up for my email newsletter. Everyone that signs up gets access to an exclusive video called Rosie's Secret Garden, which is a deep dive into some of my favorite planting combinations and styles. So moving on from the hydrangea, we come down to a lovely hosta here. This is hosta halcyon. So we have gone from a blue flower to a lemon, to a blue leaf and then a lilac flower. So we're continuing the shades. Um, and this hosta halcyon has a good leaf. It's a really good plant. Moisture, a little bit of semi-shade, it is great. And it is good to just fill up a front edge. Um, and so that works really, really well in there. Behind that, we've got this incredible tassel. And this is one of many different types of sanguisorba. So this is sanguisorba hakanensis, and this one is called lilac squirrel. It starts off with tiny little buds and then they extend out and they're straight. And then as it comes into flower, so the tassels fall down like so. There's one just starting to flower here. So it's gone from being straight to just dropping its nose and then it starts to flower. And then you get these beautiful flowers. And as it goes over, it's still looking good. It's still got color on there and it's got masses more to come out. When it's in full flower, it is just like a hanging curtain of these amazing, beautiful pink, they're almost fluorescent pink flowered tassels that come down. Once the uh, actual petals fall off, you get a lovely green head. So they stay architectural. They get quite tall. So they're going to go up above the height of the Annabelle, probably, or around about the same height. So somewhere around about one meter 50, four, four and a half feet. So that's what you'd expect those to get to. And they'll make decent sized clumps. Then moving on from that, I put in one of my favorite late season plants, and this is Persicaria uh, virginiana filiformis. And this has this beautiful chevron color on its leaf. So it's a really architectural leaf, beautiful burgundy stems. And then it's going to go up and it's just starting to put on very wiry, long, wiry flowers with tiny, tiny little orange dots on there. So that's a little bit out of the spectrum from this lot, but I think it actually fits in quite well because you're just moving slowly from sort of slightly calm and then you're coming into this and it's not bright and brash. It's just very delicate, but the foliage is fantastic. And then we finish off with the beautiful uprights of the grass here. Now I'm often asked when I do these borders and I've got this, what size this is. So this bench is actually two meters long by 80 centimeters. So that is six feet by two and a bit feet, two and a half feet probably. So that's a reasonable size border. You could make, you know, you can make it wider. And if you look at the plant material that I've put in, yes, I've put in multiple pots, but what I have done is I have put the pots in so that they are the size of one 
plant. So if you were to do this with one plant in that area, you would get this effect. And then if you think about it, you've got your grass again, you can then repeat it on down the border in a semi-shady area. So if you've got a bit more space, you can just add to it. And it will look fantastic. So you can imagine from that blue there, the blue coming against this, it will look really good. So you get a little bit of a change as you move it on because then you get the hydration here so hydrangea there hydrangea there and what I said about putting in you know just two of these grasses I've actually got three lots of grass type foliage because I've got the two grasses at the end and then I've got the hemerocallis in the middle so to my mind I've still got a three with grass type leaf in here I've got bold leaf I've got color I've got color on the leaf I've got colour in the flowers. So when you build a border, it's not all about the flower. You've got to understand what the foliage is going to do and how much the foliage is actually going to affect what the flowering plants look like. So think about those things when you are putting your plants together. And as I said, this is really, I started with the hydrangea thinking, okay, best position, semi-shade, little bit of moisture, well actually a reasonable amount of moisture. We're not talking about soggy wet ground here, we're talking about available moisture and all of these plants will be very happy in those positions. A lot of them, yes, you can move to other positions, but for this particular border and giving the effect that I wanted, these were the choices that I had. So you have Melinia, Nepeta, Hydrangea, Hemerocallis, Hosta, Sanguisorba, Persicaria. Thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe to the channel. If you want to watch another video of mine, YouTube thinks this one is perfect for you.